Well, the alarm bells are deafening. The United Nations today issuing an urgent call for action in its most comprehensive look yet at our global climate crisis. Its massive years in the making report concludes human created greenhouse gases are undeniably responsible for global warming. It's no longer a question of natural versus human caused. The report warns the only way to stop and reverse warming is to cut greenhouse gas emissions to zero. And climate change impacts already severe in every region of the planet and will get worse with every fraction of a degree of warming. The UN Secretary General calling the report a code red for humanity. CNN Climate Chief, Chief Climate Chief, Bill Weir, connecting us today from New York. It wasn't like we hadn't been warned. So, Bill, what is new and different about this report? Really, Becky, it's the certainty. It's these huge data sets and bigger supercomputers and better satellites that just prove not only predictions of 30 years ago when this warning, this code red for humanity began, but just reaffirms that those predictions were conservative. These are 234 scientists, 66 countries. They spent eight years looking at 14,000 peer-reviewed papers on all aspects of the climate. And yes, it's happening faster and more dramatically than anybody ever predicted. They moved up uh, about a decade to when we might pass the 1.5 degrees Celsius sort of red line in the sand of the Paris Accords. That will happen early 2030s now, they believe. And chances are we'll land anywhere between 3 and 5 degrees of warming Celsius past pre-industrial levels, which was a completely different planet on, on so many levels, but also saying how bad it gets is directly uh, determined to what, what is done right now. And uh, mm. they've started building political will into the models, saying uh, status as usual, this is what will happen. A, a green path where countries work together, this is where we're headed, uh, because that ultimately is the biggest X factor, human right. nature. Yeah, we're looking at images of you recently in Greenland. Tell us about what you witnessed there. It's interesting because um, they're sort of on the defrost setting of planet Earth, while others are on mm. based or broil in the south. Uh, life is easier. Uh, it's milder. It's easier to, to fish for a living in those places. More tourists are coming now. But just uh, the staggering amount of melt that's going on there uh, is frightening. It's, it's not only risking the lives of, of ice scientists I spent time with. One, Conrad Stefan, lost his life out there. Those are the first responders studying this. But it's shedding so much fresh water, it could stop the ocean currents of the Gulf Stream, which is really the thermostat for Asia mm -hmm. and, or for Europe rather, and North America. Uh, in one day last week, enough of Greenland melted to cover the state of Florida in two inches of water. And that's what's happening when we're not paying attention, when we're focused on wildfires or, or larger storms. Right. Sea level rise is a big part of this a new report saying that it could be two meters or 22 meters. Becky, it's just a matter of how soon humanity wow. changes its fuels. So if we, humanity, have caused it, how about some solutions, at least in the short term, Bill? Well, the, the thing to focus on immediately that has the most impact is methane. And uh, this, this report really sort of lays bare the, the, the theory that this is a cleaner bridge fuel, cleaner than coal. Well, a lot of things are cleaner than coal. We don't burn whales anymore. Uh, but it turns out that that natural gas is 80 times more potent than CO2. So if you imagine, you know, a baby in a car on a hot day, sun's pouring through the windshield. The windshield and the, and the steel, that's sort of carbon dioxide trapping the heat. But methane is like turning on the heater inside the car. It act, acts much faster and it's easier to control. So by capping dairy farms and figuring out how to capture, as you can see in this infrared imagery, all of that planet cooking pollution that's just leaking uh, unchecked from oil fields all across both mm. the develop and, un and developing world, uh, that would be the first place to start. We have to do that to succeed. So let's start there. That means jobs capping these wells and technology booms uh, for people who can come up with better ways to fix that problem. Uh, and so there's the conversation now, not only the trillions that could be made addressing this, but how much it'll cost if we do nothing. Yeah, absolutely. You and I will talk regularly, um, I know, because this is not going away. We need to know 
what we can all do to get on with this. We get it, and we know you get it, folks. Thank you, Bill. Just look at Greece being ravaged by wildfires, houses in flames, forests being scorched. Some of the people there calling it apocalyptic. Stations across the world have stepped up, sending in firefighters and helicopters to help. Flames and smoke turning the sky orange above Evia, Greece's second largest island. Ferries are standing by to evacuate more people in the path of flames, making it worse, dangerous climate conditions. Greece is suffering through its worst heat wave in 30 years. Let's get right to CNN's Eleni Giocos, who is on the island of Evia. And fires there, as I understand it, burning out of control. What are you witnessing? Yeah. Yeah, Becky, I mean, look, there are four fronts right now that's in the northern part of the island and we're basically very close to where the fires are currently blazing. We've been sent away because it is just that dangerous. But looking behind me here, this is sort of the apocalyptic scenario, the aftermath of the blaze that has ripped through so many parts of this island. 450,000 hectares, Becky, uh, of forest, of precious forest, has been completely destroyed. In Greece as a whole, from the beginning of the heat wave a couple of weeks ago, around 650,000 hectares have been destroyed. So it gives you a sense of the scale. The firefighters, the people, the residents that we've been speaking to say they have never seen anything uh, at this scale in the past. One firefighter said he has you know, experienced many fighters, uh, fires in his uh, career, but never this intense and this aggressive. Now, what's compounding the issue, and you've alluded to this, is the heat wave that has ripped through the country over the past uh, few days. And that, of course, intensifies the impact of uh, the, the fire. You can see here you've got, um, you know, electricity poles that have been destroyed. Most of the island lost uh, access to electricity as well as water because infrastructure has been destroyed. So uh, if you look at what it means in terms of rebuilding, you're looking at uh, a very stark scenario. You're talking about people being evacuated. Some have opted to leave. We found villagers that were about one kilometer away from the a blazing fire that decided to stay in their homes to protect their livelihoods. Um, and it was so fascinating to see men and women trying to get water to uh, firefighters. 22 countries have sent assistance, boots on the ground, helicopters, aircraft as well, uh, to try and get this fire under control. This is the seventh day, Becky. This is unprecedented for Evia Island, and people are shocked and distraught at the destruction. Mm. Eleni, thank you very much indeed. That's the story uh, in Greece at present. It's not the only country being scorched. California also living with the impact of the climate crisis right now, the massive Dixie fire. Now, the second largest wildfire in state history, and it is still growing. Thousands of people are under evacuation orders, and this fire isn't just affecting those who live in its path. Smoke from the blaze is blanketing communities across the region. CNN's uh, Camilla Bernal is in Paradise, California, with more. The smoke is thick and it's unhealthy. If you look here behind me, you're normally supposed to see a canyon. Instead, you're seeing it filled with smoke. That smoke coming south from the Dixie Fire, and it's not only flooding this canyon, but also the communities nearby. The Dixie Fire has been burning for almost a month, and we're seeing it growing, but we're not seeing much progress on containment. We are also seeing the number of structures destroyed by this fire increasing. It's now at about 400 structures destroyed by this fire. Governor Gavin Newsom using this weekend to visit the town and using the visit to talk about climate change. The extreme weather conditions, extreme droughts uh, are leading to extreme conditions uh, and wildfire challenges, the likes of which we've never seen in our history. And as a consequence, we need to acknowledge just straight up, these are climate induced wildfires. And we have to acknowledge we have the capacity in this country, not just the state, to solve this. And Governor Gavin Newsom did point to prevention, talked about things like managing the forest, but made it very clear that more needs to be done. He also thanked the 8,500 men and women who are working to stop this fire.
Camila Bernal, CNN, Paradise, California. Well, we'll get to Peru now and more than 500 people there battling a wildfire. Officials say the fire has consumed more than 8,000 hectares since it started last Thursday. Firefighters, soldiers, even local officials and residents are pitching in to battle these flames. A regional governor requesting air support. There have been no reports of injuries or deaths, thankfully, there. But extreme weather making headlines around the world, not just today, but for months, years.